Hi guys, in this video we're going to see how easy it is to enhance your Django application with HTMX. I've already built a basic Django application that allows users to filter vacation rentals based on date and number of guests. The problem is, every time a user hits the search button, there is a full page reload. Which is not just inefficient, it's also bad UX. In this video, we're going to fix this with HTMX. By the end of the video, you'll see how easy it is to add dynamic content loading to your Django applications without writing a single line of JavaScript. Let's start coding. Okay, so step one to enhancing our project with HTMX is adding HTMX to our project so we can use it. So there are multiple ways of doing this. The first is via CDN. The second is we can download it. And also there are cool Django extensions that you can use such as Django HTMX. Right now it has 1.6K stores on GitHub, which is cool. That being said, I would rather just go with the easiest and fastest way, which is just via a CDN. I'm just going to copy the script tag from the docs. And like the docs say I should do, I'm going to include it in my head tag, which is gonna be in the base.html file. Just gonna paste it right here in the head tag. With this, we'll be able to use HTMX in all our templates since we will be extending base.html everywhere every time we create a template. Alrighty, so now for the fun part. So our objective currently is to have dynamic content loading so that when a user submits the form, only the properties get reloaded and there isn't a full page reload. So to accomplish this, we are going to need to make changes to our index view, which is the view that processes requests related to the index page and renders the index page. And we're also going to need to make changes to our index template. So our index template right now contains the code that shows the form and it also contains the code that lists the properties. And since we want to list the properties dynamically on their own, we are going to need to create a new template just for the properties, a partial template. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. In the same directory where I have the index.html file, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to call it property is underscore list dot html. As you might have noticed, I've added an underscore to indicate that this is a special template that should be included within another template. But of course you could name your template in any way you want that makes sense for you and your project. Now let's open our index.html to this side. And like we said, we want to get a hold of all the code related to property list, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select it and then just cut it. So this entire property list div is now going to be in our properties list.html. One more thing we need to add, since we use the static tag here to load the images, we should also load static so that we don't get an error later. Now let's see how our page looks like now without our properties list. Let's go back and refresh it. Oh, the properties component is now gone. Okay, so actually we want to include it again but we want to include it in a div that we can reference so we can dynamically update it. Let's create a div and give it an ID. We'll use the ID to reference it in a second. So let's give it an appropriate ID, for example, property dash list. Okay, and then we want to include our properties list template. So I'll just use the include tag and write the path to our property list template. All right, now let's refresh. Yay, it shows, cool, very cool. All righty, now it's time to add some HTMX attributes. So HTMX attributes, in case you don't know, 
are attributes you can add straight to your HTML that can do super cool things. For example, this attribute hx get will cause an element to issue a get request to a specific URL and swap the HTML into the DOM using the swap strategy. So we're going to be using the hx attribute now because we want to issue a get request pointing to our index view. So let's go to our form and just simply add it. So hx get and like we said we want to point to our index view. Let's add URL. And actually let's open urls.py and double check what we called the path to the index view. Uh, we called it index. Alrighty. So now let's just point to it URL index. Another super handy attribute that is often used with the hx get attribute is the hx target attribute, which we can use to target an HTML element that we want to update. Okay, so let's add it. So hx target and we want to target this div that we've just created not long ago. Just going to copy the ID we've given it, add the hashtag here and just paste it. Alrighty, and the last attribute we are going to use in order to swap the inner HTML of our property list div is the hx swap attribute, which takes one of these values and the value that we are going to use today is the inner HTML value because it allows us to replace the inner HTML of the target element. So let's quickly add it, hx swap. And like we said, we wanna set it to inner HTML. Now we are probably a line and a half, two lines away from being done. Let's go to views.py and we just gotta add an if statement to check if there is a request coming from an HTMX enabled client. So if request dot headers dot get hx request, then we want to return render request the partial template we've created earlier. So let's add the path it. So rentals slash underscore properties underscore list dot html. And we want to pass in properties as context. And that's it. I think that should do it. Uh, okay, guys, what do we say? We try it out. Okay, let's go back to our website. Let's hard refresh. Okay, let's test it. Okay, I'm very nervous. Okay. All right, we have selected a start date and an end date. Let's set number of guests to two guests and search. Okay, it worked. It seems to have worked. Okay, let's try again. Let's this time make the number of guests four. Oh, cool. No properties found for the selected dates and number of guests. Okay, let's try one more time. Let's change the number of the guests, make it two again. And uh, let's change the date also. Oh, cool. Worked. All right, guys, we've done it. We've added dynamic content loading to our Django app that previously did not have dynamic content loading. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write them down in the comments. We love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.